Is there a need for a public broadcasting service in Trinidad and Tobago? On July 22, 2009, this was the question that fueled the thoughts and comments of the second hosting of an open forum workshop by the Telecommunications Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. This forum was the second in a series of workshops that brought together key stakeholders within the industry and the general public. And we are losing many of our young, talented videographers, editors, filmmakers, because in our current system where you're either producing government programming or you're producing commercial programming, there is no space for that creativity. You want to be autonomous and independent, and absolutely that makes sense. But you also have to make it pay for itself. First of all, this, uh, this word subsidy, um, I have a problem with it. Is, is our education system subsidized? Is our transport, public transport system subsidized? I would want to see the development of a strategic plan, a plan towards the development of the service. Their invaluable contributions brought to the forefront pertinent issues related to the development of a framework that would encompass the ideals, characteristics, concerns and guidelines relevant to the establishment of a local public broadcasting service. Ladies and gentlemen, the authority's regulation of the domestic broadcasting sector is guided by the Trinidad and Tobago's national policy on broadcast and the broadcasting industry. In particular, Section D of this national policy speaks to the issue of the implementation of a public broadcasting service. In particular, the national broadcasting pol policy states as follows. The government proposes to provide very significant exposure and development for local culture through the development of a public broadcasting service. Trinidad and Tobago is a developing plural society and there is the need for a developmental dimension to broadcasting. The government will seek to make its contribution through a public broadcasting service. And again, the public broadcasting service must serve the interest of all the peoples of Trinidad and Tobago. It shall be characterized by objectivity, trustworthiness, and transparency and shall be an instrument for the positive social and cultural evolution and enrichment of Trinidad and Tobago. My reading also informed me that under-resourced, inadequately funded, ineffective public service broadcasting is a reality, and I must say a sobering reality. That quality public service broadcasting requires infrastructural supports which include appropriate legislation, speaking to issues of political independence and funding independence, first-class management, and talented personnel. I think if there is the intent to create a public broadcasting service, autonomy is absolutely essential. But how do you do that and make it operate? Chris would be able to give you the dollars and cents of what it takes to run a, a television station. Of the early questions raised, the issue of financing took precedence. Is reliance on commercial sources of financing acceptable for public broadcasting? Could the need for commercial financing become the concern of the public broadcaster and thus change the nature of the programming? One report warns against advertising phobias. It stated that to the younger generation, the absence of advertising would seem suspicious, a sign of something elitist, therefore boring. The report therefore considers that advertising may be used in moderation to prevent the public broadcaster from cutting themselves off from the audio-visual landscape. Tobago is suffering from some of the uh, broadcasters. We can't reach Tobago. Charlottesville is one of the areas which is like Neverland because hardly any, f any form of um, reach, media reach is out there. The broadcasting world is changing quickly. The commercial benchmark for ratings may be ill-suited for measuring a public broadcaster's success in fulfilling its mandates. A public broadcaster may not always be expected to attract a majority of viewers, but may sometimes produce programs deliberately intended for only part of the public. 
Thus, a commercial broadcasting station may have high ratings, but attract the same audience at all times. Just because you're a small audience doesn't mean that you're, that you're not good. That this, is market, this is market thinking again, determining what the value of a particular channel might be or a particular program might be. The fact that you have a mass audience doesn't mean that it's a better program than a smaller audience or it has more effect than a smaller audience because that small audience might be a very influential small audience. Mm. It might be um, people who, who take that what, much more seriously what is being put there and act on it rather than just being an entertainment situation. You sit back in your chair and you think, that was nice, I can go to sleep now after a hard day's work. <laughs> Public service broadcasting or public broadcasting service is a definite attempt to circumvent those issues in the light of a higher uh, responsibility to our own development. So that the classic uh, public broadcasting services, the money that they are, f the way they are funded, allows not for mindless programming but for the kind of, the, the, the funding allows for the kind of research, the kind of consultation, the kind of, of interaction with the public that leads to the creation of the, the service that is required. So that you, you can't duck the question by simply saying that you, know, you are to face the challenge of competition, because that is a very clear statement of dealing with a, a, a market that, that, that has a dynamic right now that is not particularly in, in, the, in the higher interests of, of a developing country. Is there a need for a public broadcasting service in Trinidad and Tobago? The short answer is yes. The current commercial model claims to offer listeners what they want to hear applying business sector principles of supply and demand primarily for profit. As a consequence, programming depicting varying levels of deviancy or lewdness as being social norms are often aired, the type of programming that is not always in the best interest of society and the shaping of young minds. A public broadcasting service, however, is an indispensable tool, a sort of meeting place for information, cultural development, accessible to all, meant for all. A medium of infotainment for developing ideas to entertain and to stroke the imagination. There are lots of things going on right now, but if you are physically unable to go, you'd never know. There have been a, a series of lectures being done by UTT, examining chutney, examining many of our Calypsonians and so on. But if you're physically unable to go out to these lectures, there's no way that you're going to hear them on the radio, you're not going to see them on TV, you're not, even, you're not even going to know they exist. And these are the things that help us to understand who we are. We would love, we've been talking with yes. Professor Ramchan about doing these lectures, but who's paying for us to take a, 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 a multi-camera crew out there and do this lecture? and then deal with sometimes you have problems with rights of the people who are involved in it and they don't want it broadcast and it, it gets complicated. So yes, if there is a structure, is, if there is something set up for that sort of thing, yes. If we go for a model where there is a national broadcasting authority and a set of sub um, stations throughout the regions, those stations could afford to be a little more local in that they would be representing what's going on in the communities, what people have discovered about the railway there, about agriculture, what it used to be like there, what were the various plantations there, and so on. You would be encouraging local museums, community museums, community feeding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why I said a proper public broadcasting service is an extension of local government because communities will get a greater self-awareness of who they are and what their place is like and they will know what they want and somehow or the other the, the elected representatives will get to hear about it. My contribution with the whole concept of the public broadcasting 
The answer is yes, we, we, we do need it and so on. But the problem, however, is how it's going to work. How are we going to put the mechanism in place for the workings of this, this system? Um, having something funded by the government and still being private, it, 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 it's sort of problematic. And, and I, if, if we can work that out, we can work out the funding aspect and the, the <coughs> Well, maybe it's not privately owned. How is it? Who owns it then? Who, who owns the, this corporation? And, uh, is it Public selected Public service abroad? commissions were founded on the principle that although the government is paying for it, the government doesn't control it. Right. And these are bodies that interpose between the government and the citizenry. So um, the Public Service Broadcasting Authority would have to have the kind of status or standing mm -hmm. that one of the public service commissions has. A local broadcaster will provide information enabling listeners to form the fairest possible idea of events. If not objective, the information should at least be unbiased. Such information will allow the different viewpoints to be expressed and foster an enlightened understanding of current events. As the British author Anthony Smith wrote on his view of the BBC, he stated, it is so important that it has probably been the greatest of the instruments of social democracy of the century. If you get a, a public broadcasting service, it is not for us or the TATT or so. It, they have to think of who it is, for, for whom it is. And therefore, are we trying to find out from the people what they want? A public broadcasting service doesn't necessarily have to be 100% local so that we should be able to uh, see a Shakespeare play or, or, or a classic, but see, see it through our own eyes, have people talking about that and its relevance to our own society and all that sort of thing, if, and, and mediate it in that way if you wish. We will have to have the kind of um, legislation, develop the, the professional cadre of journalists and the regulatory systems in place that will support the new culture of openness that this suggests, while at the same time dealing with the, the forces that are going to be there that are going to be very clear that this is not necessarily the way they would want to see things go. So I would want to see a good plan that takes those things into consideration with the emphasis on the long-term approach. A public broadcasting service in Trinidad and Tobago to its advantage would be emerging in a new digital era, thus circumventing the woes of upgrading from analog to digital or from standard definition to high definition broadcast that plague many media entities today. In addition, the convergence of broadcasting, telecommunications, internet technologies and more affordable hardware solutions can provide the networking links that would complement the organization's own individual public service mission. We have so many radio stations, so many television stations, cable <coughs> access, etc. But it's not a priority with these people to be uh, to broadcast for the benefit of the general public's, um, you know, for their benefit, a, a lecture that is, is is really very very much um, relevant to their own society and to their consciousness. You know, the, a fact there's a sport match or so, something something that's important to society to Trinidad and Tobago. If it's not paid for, if it's you know if it's not brought up by somebody who has the money to pay for it, it just goes the way that this young lady was, was saying, and that's most unfortunate because, you know, there was a time when there was only one television station and three or four radio stations, and the mandate for the National Broadcasting Service, which does not exist, was to inform, educate, and entertain, and I, really, really, we took it seriously, and we would go out, and that's, that's a station that started to um, bring parang to people on the radio, and, you know, they had to put on their government programming as well, but the producers and the young people who worked in that station were very cognizant of what was important to the people out there that comprise their target audiences. What has happened to all of these many radio stations now? Why do they not cover these things when they think it's important to the general public? It's, the, you know, the corporate and commercial concern. We've changed our value system.